Hello everyone, this is Base16. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, using parse.com dashboards for your uh, parse server, self hosted parse server, and using RoboMongo to viewing your database. And uh, lastly, we are going to uh, connect our server with FileZilla and check out our, fi our files and folders inside it. So, first we are going to use parse.com dashboard. So, uh, while parse still up, uh, we were using parse.com dash dashboard.parse.com uh, interface for the developing and checking out our database uh, and other things. But of course, uh, parse is going to shut down. So it's just a UI that left us to use with our own servers. So uh, just uh, log in to parse.com, create a sign up, uh, create a user account, and create an app. So here you have to choose a name for application for your application. For example, parse Mongo. Uh, tutorial and we get to choose custom and we should enter our mongodb connection URL which is uh, the same thing that we entered at our server so let me check what was this uh, URI bash RC so this was our database URI with the username and password. Remember our username is Mongo parse Mongo user and one to three. So let's make it. Uh, it's uh, suggesting us to use SSL. Uh, yes, it's very important to use SSL with uh, your server and connection string. Uh, but uh, this is for demonstration purposes only, so I'm going to make it anyway. So that that's that's it actually. Yeah, there is only one class. It's automatically uh, created by Parse, and uh, nothing nothing more. As you can see. Uh, this is our MLAB uh, interface. Uh, you can see there is only one user, uh, one uh, class, and a schema schema class. So as you can see, there is an underscore uh, at the end of the at the beginning of the class name, but in parse dashboard you won't see that. While uh, developing your applications uh, or making queries, you have to use this underscore over here. But uh, in the dashboard, you won't you won't see that was that was cost me a lot of time while I'm trying to develop an Android application with Parse. So there is some must-have uh, classes for Parse. So user is one of them, and there should be an installation class. So I can just easily create these. Here, uh, creating these things with your uh, hand or query uh, SQL, uh, strings would be harder than that's why parse dashboard is very helpful about it so custom role and yes role and product some of them for example uh, sometimes Maybe you don't want to use product uh, class, but uh, if you need it, it's uh, good to have it in here. So you can't, you won't be able to see your cloud code here because uh, we have just connected uh, to our MLAB uh, database. So our cloud code won't be stored here. It's in our uh, server. So, uh, these some of these uh, settings, for example, logs, jobs, none of them 
will going to look uh, work. So this is just a, a UI to check out your database and create uh, create this base class. And it's a great UI. So using other database configuration or even tools, uh, maybe not quite good as this uh, parse build dashboard. So as, as I already told you, you can send push over here to you can not view analytics. Maybe there is a way to uh, create or configure these settings to work with your parse server, but not, I, I don't know any way to do this right now. So this is our parse, parse dashboard, parse.com dashboard, and as you can, as I can, as I told you, these are the things you can do with it. And second part of our part of this tutorial, we are going to use RoboMongo to be, uh, connect our database and view the class and files. So RoboMongo is a client for viewing MongoDB servers database. As you can see, there is already all, all Windows, Mac and Linux uh, versions. So I'm going to download Linux right now. It's uh, I'm not sure if it is found in the repository. Let me check. No. So there is it's not in the repository. So let me open this. Extract to desktop. Show files and yes. Excuse me. So this is a runnable file. Of course, it's opened in the editor. Uh, okay, we are going to create uh, a connection to our server. So we should name it as base the Mongo server address. So what's the address of our server database? There should be an info. So I think this is the address of our server. And not this port, this port we are using. Okay, from authentication database, what's the database name? Pass tutorial DB. The username is what was our username? Pass Mongo user 123. Pass Mongo user 123. Test. Okay, it's okay. So let's connect our database. As you can see, we are connected. You can see connections, uh, collections are collections. Uh, for example, this is the installation collection that I've created with this parse uh, dashboard. And job status, these are the things that uh, parse dashboard won't show you. If you are capable of using this kind of information, using RoboMongo is very useful for you. So let's create, let's create a user over here and check it out. Base 16. Right. 16. Yes, user uh, save. Let's see if we can uh, 
see the user. Our user table is over here. Uh, by the way, uh, in MySQL or other databases, we generally call uh, these kind of structures as uh, tables. But uh, in MongoDB and other NoSQL database, they call these things collections. So it's a little bit uh, confusing, but it's not uh, really complicated. So as you can see, the created uh, we created a user, and it all automatically created a session token, a hashed password, a perishable token, and all of these all these things. Uh, done by parse, parse that dashboard because uh, as you can see our server isn't even running I didn't run the parse server because I have to write npm start to do this npm start I didn't write this code uh, command so parse server is actually uh, down and par uh, parse dashboard is uh, parse dashboard don't know where is our uh, server and even our mongodb database uh, have no idea about our uh, server's location or ip address so this is uh, this this step is done and lastly we are going to connect our server with FileZilla to view our files. As you can see, there is files or folders in our uh, in our uh, server. So, writing or uh, working on on these files, it's a SSH terminal is not quite satisfying so there is a protocol for this sftp save uh, i think uh, it's save file transfer protocol uh, uh, i'm not sure about it so sftp root at our ip address what was our ip address let's copy it Okay, uh, we don't have to enter any port or any other, uh, other thing because it's uh, already known a known port and it's already complete complete with twenty two. So uh, as I mentioned, the same same question asks uh, asked us again uh, if you do you trust this server? Okay, and my passphrase. Now, as you can see, I can uh, walk around these files in my server. And even if I want to, for example, index a JS file uh, for, is a very crucial file for Parse server because it's, uh, con it's it has very uh, different uh, configuration uh, strings in it. So, for example, I can edit this file from here with this with sublime text or another editor I want I don't have to work with this stream It's in the parse. Uh, I don't have to work with this. So, Vim is a quite powerful editor, but as you, if you are not capable of using Vim or it's uh, not not for you, you can use a uh, Word GUI editor for this uh, job. And there's one one more point. Uh, we we edit some of our case, for example, app ID or database URI, 
in our bash rc file. If you don't want to do that, uh, if you don't want to set variables for these kind of jobs, you can use this file uh, and enter your uh, MongoDB URI here, uh, cloud code main uh, folder uh, here, and you can have, you can set, uh, add your app ID here and other things. Because I have already uh, uh, added this configuration at bash rc file so I'm not going to edit these or write these uh, things again as you can see I can view my files create files download files uh, it's quite easy to manage your server with uh, sftp so that's it that's it for today uh, if you have any questions please uh, ask in the ask in the comment below and uh, don't forget to subscribe 